Planet Mission Part 1 by David Claiborne, as read by the author. New chapters every Monday. The full novel is available on Amazon.com and other online retailers. Links in the description. Chapter 24 Over Soon Through the trees in a clearing ahead they saw the creature. It was not at all as waters expected. The creature before them was sickly pale, as if it had not been exposed to daylight for years. Its skin both clung and hung from its bones at the same time. Its ribs, spine, and pelvis were visible, giving it the appearance of starvation. The spinous processes were elongated and protruded through its skin, as did the ends of its free-floating ribs. It squatted in front of something and concentrated, manipulating whatever it had with hand-like paws and pointed claws. It must be starving, Waters whispered. Yes, starving. It needs help. Yes, help. Quiet, Jonathan hissed. It doesn't know we're here yet. We can surprise it. Do not kill. Just an animal. Innocent. Do not kill. I don't think we should kill it. It's just an animal. We should try to recapture it. Yes, capture. Let live. Live. We need to kill it. That's our only purpose right now, Jonathan said. It's not right to kill it. It's just an animal. Clear thinking. Many choices. Many options. Alex, we must not allow it to escape. Get your lance. Jonathan stepped into the clearing. He crouched and moved on the balls of his feet as quietly as he could. Junebuck looked at Waters uncertainly, then followed. He stepped slowly and imitated Jonathan's movements. Waters gripped his lance with both hands and considered it. I've never killed before, he said to himself. Have never killed, should never kill. He looked up and saw that Jonathan was now fully in the clearing. In a few moments he would be in striking range. Waters' heart was beating so hard he could hear it. This is not right, he said aloud. We're not supposed to kill animals. Not kill. Waters looked at the lance again, then at the apoch. He suddenly let out a cry, Gah! Not sure what he even meant to say. The apoch turned and looked directly at him. Membranous, large, pupilless eyes saw through him. Jonathan lunged and missed. Waters swore the creature grinned before it leapt out of the way and into the trees where it disappeared. Alex! Jonathan called out, stifling a curse. Junebuck stumbled up behind Jonathan. He held his lance, resolute but clearly glad he had not needed to use it. Waters held his lance like a walking stick and stepped into the clearing. They came closer and could see the object upon which the apoch had been so intent. The apoch had splayed a small animal like a squirrel, Waters thought, one of the moon's skuros against the bark of a tree. A splinter of wood pierced each of its tiny paws and pinned it to the tree. Folds of soft skin hung from its frame where the apoch had carefully pulled it away from the fascia to expose the muscles as it flayed the creature alive. Pulses of red flashed over the animal. It was in pain. It's still alive, Jonathan said. He plunged the point of his lance into the animal's chest. It flashed bright and then slumped, dead. I'm sorry, little one, Jonathan said. After a moment he turned to Waters. Do you see? Do you see now, Alex? The apoch is a creature of pure evil. It knows only cruelty and wants only the worst kind of destruction. It feeds on suffering. Don't know. I don't know, Waters said. Maybe it was only eating. Maybe this is just how they feed. Can't you see what's right in front of you? Jonathan said. I think he's right, Alex, Junebuck said. Can't be right. No, that can't be right, Waters said, almost mumbling. Jonathan looked at Waters intently, grabbed his cheeks between his thumb and forefinger, and pointed Waters' eyes at his. Waters stared back blankly. It's still here, Jonathan mouthed with dread and raised his lance. Jonathan had barely moved when the apoch dropped from the trees onto Junebuck, who collapsed in a heap. It leapt in the air again and came down a second time and crushed him. Junebuck's clothes tore under the apoch's claws and spurs. The apoch spun around on its heel with a kick and slammed Jonathan into a tree, knocking the wind out of him. The apoch held him there with its hind leg. Jonathan let out terrible gasps as he struggled to get air back into his lungs. The apoch was on him instantly. 
It grabbed Jonathan under his chin and lifted him high against the tree, leaving his feet dangling. Jonathan flailed and beat against the arm that held him with all his might, but the apoch did not move in the least. The apoch turned a blank, membranous eye to Waters, who stood as in a haze. This time there was no mistaking its sneer. It turned back to Jonathan, grabbed his arm in a claw, and forced it away from his body. Jonathan resisted with all his strength, but could do nothing. A strange, uncanny smile crept across the creature's mouth as it watched Jonathan struggle. The apoch let go of Jonathan's neck and held him against the tree by the wrist. Reaching into its side, it snapped off one of its spines, then slammed it through Jonathan's forearm and pinned him to the tree. Jonathan cried out in anguish and kicked at the apoch's face to no avail. Alex! he yelled with desperation. Waters looked at the scene vacantly and knew he should do something, but did not seem to have the will. He felt as if he watched a film play out in front of him, that he was merely an observer. All of this would be over, and the next scene would start soon enough. Over soon. Yet he had to act. How would it look if he did nothing? He looked at the lance in his hands and thought he should at least attempt something. He raised the lance, pointed it at the apoch, and allowed it to make contact with the creature. The lance left a shallow mark in its back hardly worse than a scratch. A white, waxy substance immediately coagulated around the area his lance touched. The apoch flinched and released Jonathan, who cried out in pain as he dangled from the tree by the spike in his forearm. The apoch screamed and with a backhanded swipe sent Waters flying across the clearing. Instantly Waters' eyes opened and he saw. He saw the tiny animal hanging from the tree, pinned with the apoch's own spines. He saw Junbuck unconscious and dying in the dirt. He saw the blood streaming down Jonathan's arm where the apoch pierced him. He looked up and saw the creature approaching, no longer smiling, but wearing a look of genuine malice and vengeance. It walked, then trotted, then charged. Waters did not know what to do. He tried to bring the lance up, but the end was caught in beady vines at the base of the tree. There was no time to struggle. One more bound and the apoch would be on him. He pointed the blade with the shaft still caught in the vines, turned his head, closed his eyes, and braced for the impact. Jonathan braced his feet against the tree where he hung, and with a cry of terrific effort pulled his arm free over the spine that pinned him. He fell to the ground but did not stop. He picked up his lance and stepped forward. He drew his throwing arm so far back the ligaments popped. The lance traced a line across his arm and chest. With a tremendous heave, he arced the lance toward his enemy. The point of Jonathan's lance transfixed the apoch, and the point stopped mere centimeters from Waters' face. The apoch arched backward in pain. It howled and pulled at the shaft desperately before it collapsed onto its knees and slouched forward into Waters. Its head bowed, and with a sigh let out the last air from its lungs. Something like wax sloughing off a candle oozed from the apoch's body as it passed. Its skin turned inky black as the light of thousands of victims left its body and flowed into the earth below. A pattern emerged in its skin like blood-red leopard spots as its hide drained. Across the clearing, Waters saw Jonathan standing once more. He clenched a mangled and bloody forearm tight with his good hand. Waters pushed off the apoch's body and ran to Jonathan. "'I'll be okay,' Jonathan said. He removed his belt and wrapped it on his bicep above the wound. He inserted a stick under the belt and twisted until the blood flow stopped. "'Tie the belt around the stick, please,' he said to Waters. "'I can't with one hand. We need to help Junebuck.' Junebuck lay still where the apoch had leapt on him. He was unconscious and had many broken bones, but was breathing. Jonathan's drone arrived with a first aid kit from his saddlebag. "'They can do that?' Waters asked. "'They can do that,' Jonathan said. Gently, Jonathan used his forearms to secure Junebuck's neck and rolled the unconscious man onto his back, protecting his spine. He poured a swallow of viti juice into Junebuck's mouth, then he fished around inside the kit and pulled out a small glass ampule. He broke and waved it under Junebuck's nose. Junebuck awoke instantly and gagged. Even Waters recoiled at the pungent smell from a distance. All our tech and still smelling salts are the best way to wake someone up, Jonathan said. Junebuck tried to sit up, but they stopped him. "'You are severely hurt,' Jonathan said. "'I gave you some juice from the fruit of the vine, but even that needs time to work. Lay here. We don't know the extent of your injuries yet. An Arcuda will come soon, and we can take you back to the city.' Then, before their eyes, the fallen apoch began to deflate. As if the decomposition process accelerated, 
All that had been substance, bones, organs, blood, flesh, were devoured in seconds. The lance fell to the ground as form left the apoch's body, leaving nothing but a black pelt. It would have been pitiful had they not known the creature to which it belonged. Jonathan picked up the pelt and held it at arm's length. He looked from the pelt to Waters. Here, you can have the pelt. I'll get the next one. Waters did not really want it, but he did not have a mind to argue any longer. He took it gingerly. The texture surprised him. I've never felt leather before, he said. Jonathan bit into a viti and tossed a piece of fruit to Waters, which he ate as they rode. A few minutes later Jonathan removed the tourniquet, and Waters was surprised to see that the wound in his forearm was already healing. Junebuck dozed comfortably in a makeshift stretcher on the back of an arcuda. "'He'll be all right?' Waters asked. "'He'll be fine, but he'll need time to recover,' Jonathan said. He paused, as if hesitating, then continued. "'The Apox are not native to Polis, as far as we can determine. You can tell just from observation. All the native animals have wings, even if they don't use them. The Apoch have two legs and two arms, like a human. But they're not human, and they're hardly animals. Besides that, we've performed genetic assays that show they're not from Polis. This planet is practically paradise. The Apoch are wicked, pure evil. They do not belong here. We don't know where they're from, and as far as we know, no one does. Waters felt obliged to argue, but he lacked the will just then. He pondered the pelt lashed in a roll on his saddlebags and wondered how they had been so wrong. Animals could not be cruel. They were incapable of higher behavior. Yet this one delighted in suffering. Killing animals was wrong, yet was it wrong to kill this animal? They rode back in silence, left to their own thoughts. 